Hey, what's up? Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and you're looking at my secret weapon for productivity. This is a Google Sheet that I built. Let me check the first date here. Uh, back in 2018, in August. Since then, I've tracked my productive hours every single week, and the reason for this is this is the best way to stay accountable. I'm the type of guy who needs data to review and to improve. And I don't like using third-party apps. I want to own my data, so that's why I always use Google Sheets as opposed to you know the latest iPhone app to track your time. The other thing is those apps are just so bloated. I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. And we're going to go into exactly how I put together this spreadsheet in just a bit, so stick with me. Right now, if you want to grab a free copy of this template, I'm going to link it up in the top right and in the description below. And then you're going to see that I built automation into this. So instead of having to manually input your hours, instead of having to press start and stop the exact time that you start work and stop work, you can just use Google Calendar and it's going to automatically import into this Google Sheet. And then you can just pop into this spreadsheet every week or two and review how you've been spending your time and to make adjustments to make sure that you're getting the most value out of the work that you're doing. And one last thing before we get into the demo, the idea for this spreadsheet came from a few different sources books and podcasts. So I'm going to link them in the description below so you can check them out as I describe it a little bit later in this video. So let's get to the demo. I just opened the link and that'll bring up this spreadsheet. And from here, like I said, you have to be logged into your Google account and you're going to want to go to file, make a copy, and you can name it whatever you want. I just call it time. I like to keep all my file names as simple as possible, but if you want to name it time tracker, that's okay too and that will create a copy that we can then edit. And what you'll see is the automation gives you this new menu up at the top here, which should be loaded in a second or two. And there it is. And from here, this is where we can automatically import from our Google Calendar, and then we can turn on automatic tracking to import from our Google Calendar every single week without even touching this. Over on the right here, this last tab, this is where you can check out the instructions for how to get set up. As you can see here, the first note tells you that the hours tab, that's where you input all your data. So this is where all the data input goes and the year tab just takes all the data from the hours tab and sums it up year by year. And the week tab is just a graph of your weekly productivity that pulls from that hours tab as well. So let's go back to the steps tab. And the first thing that we want to do is set the first date in cell A2. I'd say here that you want to pick a Sunday to match GCAL Google Calendar Weekly View. So you can see they, by default, have Sunday through Saturday. I'm not sure if, if that's a setting that you can change, but that's what I've been going by just because I'm operating off of Google Calendar. So today is Saturday the 21st. So I'm going to jump to next week, and I'll pick March 22nd as the first date. So I'll go to the hours tab and from here you can double click and use the date picker. And you can see here that the following rows are calculated using a formula. I just add seven days to the first date and I'm actually going to clear out these last two rows here. I don't want to empty out the merge cells because they're automatically going to sum these four weeks together. But it's important to keep the second row here because like I said, these two columns, columns A and B, have formulas for row three. So you want to keep those formulas in place. So let's go back here. And I also mentioned that, that's what I just said here. So we want to set our category tags, which is row one, columns C through E with the yellow background. And I have a note here to help you out. And just to show you how I do it on my calendar, I use acronyms for the category tags. I usually do this based off a domain. So my website, which is WebsiteProfitCourse.com, I just use the acronym WPC. And any event that has to do with that, I'll add that tag to the front of the event name. So a good example is when I send out my monthly bulletin in my Google Calendar, that looks like this, WPC Email Bulletin. So you can set this however you want, but what I have for an example here is I'm logged into a Google account where my name is Brian. This is just a, a test Google account that I use sometimes. What I'm gonna do is have three tags, and as a quick explanation, the reason I have placeholders in here, core, 
adjacent and bet. I got this from a podcast with Eric Schmidt, who is the CEO of Google, and I just felt like it, it really hit me in the right way. I felt like it's a great way to divide your time if you're trying to work on a couple different projects at once. Most people might split their time, you know, a third, a third, a third, and that's pretty much the wrong way to do it. This is a better way. And I'll also link up the podcast if you want to check it out and listen to him because he could do it better than I can. But the way that he described it was you want to spend your time split 70, 20, and 10. And that 70% is going to be your core business. In this example, I'm going to use the tag BWD for Brian's web design. And the 20% should be an adjacent business to your core business that you know is a method to grow. I'm going to just imagine that we're going to be selling WordPress templates. Maybe somebody wants to buy a WordPress template and they want to do all the work themselves. So maybe, you know, after we do our first couple web designs for clients, we can turn that into a product and sell that. So I'll use the tag WPT for that. And then let's say that our last 10% of our time is going to be dedicated towards a big bet, something that we feel is going to pay us way better than what we're doing right now. And the way that I view this is I think this is where your blog should come into play. You should have a separate blog that isn't related to WordPress or web design, maybe something that's in a, a more non-technical niche and go after that. So just to keep things simple here, I'm gonna call this fit as though I was running a fitness blog. And these are gonna be the three buckets of time that we're gonna track through our Google Calendar and within the spreadsheet. And you can see that when you update your tags here, it's going to update them everywhere in these columns over here, over in the year tab, and also here in the week tab. Let's go back to the steps. And here I say to manually input the first two weeks of hours to columns C and E. So we'll just make up some numbers here. I actually already have them in here. And if you're doing it manually, you'll want to select these first two rows and drag it down here. And that will copy the formula from columns A and B down to row four. This just sums up these three columns. So every single week, if you're doing it manually, just input your hours for your three categories. And likewise, when you get to a new merge row, you can just select the merge rows and drag that down. Now, since we're going to demo the automated version, let's give that a shot. Let's go to the steps here and see what we got to do next. All we have to do is just tag our events. So I'm going to go back to the hours tab here and then open up Google Calendar and we'll put a couple test events in here to see if everything's working correctly. So let's go back to the time tracker, check out our steps. And right here, if we use the tracker import from GCal function, that should append our data. So let's do that. Go tracker import from GCal. Now the first time you do this, you're going to get this authorization pop up. I forgot to mention this. It's going to show as though that you can't trust this. And that's just because it's custom code. This isn't a Google Chrome approved extension or anything like that. So we're just going to click continue. And this is my test account. And then we get this pop up here. This app isn't verified. They're going to want you to go back to safety. Like I said, you can trust this. Just click the advanced button. Click go to time tracking and it's going to show you what this app has access to. So just click allow and then once you do this, you can run it again and it will actually run the import function. And it ran successfully. I think I just had the wrong date here. Yeah, I was doing that week at 322 and it was importing the third week here which is four or five so I got to move these all these events to that week so now I got all these on the correct dates this is from April 6th through April 10th and if we quickly sum these up you can see the BWD tag that's two hours three hours here and then another four hours so that's seven hours total for that tag I got one hour total for the WPT tag and I got three hours for the fit tag. So let's go back to the time tracker spreadsheet. And I'm just going to remove this week of data since that was empty. And let's run this again. And let's see if we get those totals. 
and it ran successfully again. If you have any errors, you'll see an error message here and you can just forward that along to me and I will help you debug it. Unfortunately, this isn't like software where I can, I can send updates to the code. You would have to manually copy and paste the automation code. But I tested this using a lot of different cases. So I think as long as you follow these rules and just use it as I'm using it here, you'll be okay. So let's go back to the hours. And it looks like everything imported successfully. We got that 713 and that's 11 hours total and this also does some fractional hours it, it doesn't just round it up so if you had seven and a half or six and a half it might show the rounded up value or rounded down value but it should actually have that full fractional value in the in the cell so that's all there is to this and then let's say we want to track automatically now what we want to do is go to tracker toggle automatic tracking and that's going to give us a pop-up and tell us whether or not it's on or off right now. And right now we can see it's off and we get to choose whether we want to enable this. So if we want to enable it, just click yes. And as long as you get this auto tracking is successfully enabled message, this will automatically do that function that I just did manually, the import from GCAL. It's going to run that every Monday. So basically, as long as you have your Sunday through Saturday planned, and good to go on Google Calendar. You have that Sunday to, to fix anything if for some reason you had something that you missed in the calendar. And then that Monday morning it's going to run and pull your data from the previous week. And I think as these weeks get added, you shouldn't have any issues with the graph. Every, every now and then on some of my spreadsheets, because I have like a handful of 10 or 20 different spreadsheets that I use for various things, sometimes the new weeks just stop getting added onto the graph so if that ever happens to you you might need to go into the um, edit chart button here and extend the columns to make sure that you're pulling in data from every column on the hour sheet and you could also change the colors if you like to do that but otherwise you should be ready to go here and this is such a good way to stay accountable for your time it's helped me tremendously over the past year so if you want to grab a copy of the automated version I'm going to include a link where you can buy that in the top right and the description below. And if you just want to grab the free version and manually input your hours, however you, you know, track if you're not using a calendar, go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash tracker and you can download that free Google Sheet template. And like I said before, I think a blog is a great vehicle to make a big bet. You know, there's tons of people that make a full-time living online blogging. And I put together a course that shows you exactly how to set it up with WordPress, which is by far the most popular blog software out there. If you want to sign up for that, go to 14dayblog.com. And even if you don't want to become a full-time blogger, I think a blog is really the new resume. You know, if, if you're competing against people who are just sending a one-page resume and you have a blog that has 20 or 30 blog posts on a topic that's related to a job that you're going after, you know, who do you think the boss is going to give preference to? I think you're obviously going to be in the finalists almost every single time. And I know that I've hired freelancers because of that. I get to know who they are through their writing and what they care about. And it humanizes them and makes you real as opposed to just a name on a piece of paper. Everybody should, at the very least, claim their full name. You know, get, get your domain name with your full name if you can. So that's all I got for this video. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like this spreadsheet. I put so much time into building spreadsheets. I, I personally love them to track everything important in my life. And I'm guessing if you made it this far in the video, you're that type of person too. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks a lot and have a great day, everyone.